Okay, I've got something different for y'all today. So usually I go over specific um, example problems. This time, this is just gonna be kind of an informational type video for simple harmonic motion. I was doing some work um, in controls today and I thought it would be good to kind of just go over the basics of simple harmonic motion, kind of go over what these graphs mean, um, what the terms and everything are. Now these images, these are from a physics book. Let's write down what that is. So physics, it actually has, what's the actual name? Principles and Practice of Physics uh, by Mazur. And that's a calculus-based physics book, in case you're interested. All right, so that's where I got these from. But let's go through and let's kind of talk about what's going on um, with these graphs. So anytime you're modeling, um, let's think of a spring mass system, you're going to have motion like this. Okay, you're going to have that oscillation motion. And so we call it simple harmonic motion. Now, what we see here, you've got a circle here, right? And it's related to this graph over here. So let's talk about what's going on. Okay, this right here is called a reference circle. All right, so we've got this reference circle. And then you'll notice it's got this arrow here. Okay, so this arrow has a name. It's called phaser. Okay, and this arrow basically goes around the circle. Notice we've got this omega. Omega is going to be the speed at which we're going around in a circle. Okay, so this angle here, or not angle, but this term right here is called your angular frequency. And we'll write out some information about it in just a second. Okay, but that's what that is. So it's your angular frequency. So we've got this phaser. It's going around the circle. That's the angular speed at which it's rotating about this center point. And you can see that this is related over here, okay, on this sinusoid graph. Okay, so let's look at what's going on here. So notice our graph is starting up here. It's not at the origin. It's up here. The reason for that is we're saying that the position of our phaser on the reference circle is at this location. Okay, so that's how we get over to here. All right, so this is just the, this height right here is that vertical component of the phaser at t equals zero. Now this phaser is gonna rotate along this circle, right? So at each of these points, you come over here and you get a new point on this line. So this line here just represents the motion of this phaser as it goes around the circle, okay? So like I said, so it goes from here to here as it goes from this point to this point on the circle. Then, you know, it comes up to here and notice if we're stopping at this dashed line here, we ended up with two points, right? I end up with a point here from right here and then over here, I got another one. Okay, so that is what this sinusoid curve is. It's just giving you a description of what this phaser is doing as it's going around this circle. Okay, now notice we've got some other things listed, right? It says one cycle. And then we've got like pi over omega, two pi over omega. Okay, so let's kind of define some terms and then we can talk about this a little bit more. All right. So first of all, let's define what F is. Okay, so if you've been dealing with simple harmonic motion, you've seen F. F is just your natural frequency. Okay, and what does that mean? Well, what that means is it's the number of cycles per unit of time. Okay, so that's what that is. So notice that this says that this is one cycle. And the reason why it's one cycle, we start here at this point, we end up here at the same vertical height on the reference circle. Okay, so that is a one cycle because we're starting and ending at that same height here on this circle. Okay, so natural frequency is just the number of cycles we get per unit of time. And usually the unit of time is seconds. Occasionally you'll see minutes, but usually it's seconds. 
And a lot of the times the unit you'll see here uh, for that, you might see CPS, I've seen that. Um, so cycles per second. And uh, you might also see Hertz. All right, so a Hertz is just a cycle per second or a cycle per unit of time. Okay, so that's what it would be. Um, so they're both kind of the same, but some books like to use CPS. I'm not sure why. Okay, so that is our natural frequency. So remember, this is one cycle. This just tells you how many of those cycles you get per unit of time, whether it be seconds or minutes, hours, whatever it would be. Typically, though, you're using seconds. Okay, so that is what F is. And now let's go over the omega, which is right here. So we already said that's angular frequency. So what is that? Well, basically that's just the rotation speed of your reference circle. Okay, so that's all that is. So imagine you've just got a line on this circle and the circle is spinning, all right? So that's what it's doing. The phaser is that line, right? So that line is just spinning around at that rate of omega. Okay, now units for this um, will be inverse seconds, all right? So basically you get per second for angular frequency, okay? Now we've got a relationship between these two between natural frequency and angular frequency. And that relationship is omega equals two pi f, okay? So now we get that relationship there. Okay, and this is important, you'll use that quite a bit. Um, but that's how you relate uh, your number of cycles per unit of time with the speed at which you're rotating this reference circle. So we got that, and then one more thing, one more term here. We got a capital T. That's gonna be for the period. Now the period, that is the time to complete one cycle of oscillation. All right, so that's what the period is. So if we have one cycle here, this right there is gonna help find us the period. Now, the period is related to the natural frequency, and that relationship is T equals one over F. Okay, so we've got that. And then if you consider this, think of the units here. F is basically per unit of time, so the units for period would just be seconds if we're using seconds for our unit of time, all right? So for example, just so you can kind of see the, the difference in the numbers here, if I've got a period of 0.15 seconds, the frequency, if I you know plug in my numbers here, um, would be one over T, right? So then that would be 6.667, cycles per second, okay? So that's how those are related. The period is how long it takes to do one cycle. The frequency is how many cycles you get per unit of time, all right? So that's kind of how those two things are related. Okay, and remember, again, one cycle is where you start and end at the same point on that graph, okay? So now we've got that kind of explained. Now let's go down here to this next picture, right? Because this one has some more stuff on it. So we've still got our reference circle. We've still got that angular frequency here. We've got that phaser. Remember the phaser is just, you know, on that circle and the circle spinning. So the phaser or the arrow spins along with it. Okay. Now if you'll notice, we've got the same sinusoid, but now we've got a on here, okay? So A is your amplitude. So A is just basically telling you how high up you're going from that you know, horizontal axis there. 
and remember that's t and that's x i don't think i mentioned that before but that's what those are all right so that's amplitude so obviously the higher um, a is the larger the number is the higher up you're going right you'd go up a lot more and then down more okay so we got positive a up here and negative a here usually when you're talking about amplitude though it's going to be a positive number we just have negative here because we're going below the horizontal axis okay now how is amplitude and everything related together well before we can talk about that we need to talk about something called phase because right, you see it mentions phase here um, so let's let's go over that so the equation for phase is going to be phi t all right and it's equal to omega t plus phi sub i all right so phi is basically just telling you where you're located on um, your reference circle at a specific t point in time all right, that's essentially what it is. So basically what we've got here is we're going to have the phase. It's basically going to be the angle between the horizontal axis and the phaser. All right, that's basically what it is. Okay, so notice here it says the phase at t equals 0 is phi sub i. Okay, and we're saying that the initial time that our phaser was off the, you know, horizontal axis. So there's some angle here, right? And that's what that phase is. It just tells you what your angle is from the horizontal to the phaser as you're going around um, with that angular speed there, omega. Okay, so for instance, if my phaser, let's use a pink color here if my phaser is up here at this point what is this angle right here gonna be the angle between the horizontal and that vertical axis it's gonna be 90 right so our phase at this point would be pi over 2 because you denote it in radians okay so pi over 2 is 90 degrees right now let's say we're over here so now I need this angle okay so that would be the phase right going from the angle going from the horizontal over to the phaser over here well that's 180 degrees right which is pi radians okay so right here our phase would equal pi okay and I know we're right here because we're right on the horizontal axis, so it corresponds over here. Down here, if we were located here with our phaser, then this one would be, you know, this whole angle here, right? So that's 270, which is equivalent to 3 pi over 2. And that's going to correspond to right here. So our phase for that point would be 3 pi over 2. Okay, and then finally, last one, last easy one, right here when we're on that horizontal axis, we've gone all the way around, right? So that's 360 degrees, so that's 2 pi, and then that would be a phi of 2 pi. Okay, so that's what the phase is. It's just telling you where your phaser is um, on your reference circle with respect to that horizontal axis. It's just an angle. That you're calculating you just do it in radians versus degrees okay so that is what um, we're getting there okay and the equation there would be omega t plus of phi sub i okay because obviously you can do more than one cycle right and you'd get a longer graph okay so that's what phase is now with that Notice this graph here is x with t, okay? So think about this modeling a system that has a spring and a mass, okay? If that's the case, then this would be like the position of the spring, okay? So x would be our position. So this is modeling behavior of the mass, and the equation that we would get would be x of t, and it's going to be a sine phi of t okay 
So A is that amplitude, and then we have sine of phi. Now you might be wondering, well, how do we know that? Well, remember the phaser, or not the phaser, but the phase is the angle between the horizontal and the phaser, right? So as that changes, our position here changes, okay? So it's easier to see over here. So if the phaser is up here, we've got an angle, right? We've got that phase angle. And the vertical distance here would be a sine of phi, okay? So this corresponds to this location. And that's how we're getting this. So your x changes based on what the phase is, okay? And that would be our equation for this line. All right, so now we've got that. And again, the amplitude just tells you how high up you're going above and below that horizontal axis. Okay, so think of this as being position. If we wanted velocity, we would come down here and we would take the derivative with respect to time, right? Because velocity is the derivative with respect to time of position. Okay, so if I take the derivative of this, actually before we do that, let's expand this out. Let's put this in place down here. So we'll have a sine omega t plus phi sub i. So now let's go ahead and take the derivative of this. Okay, so remember you do the derivative of outside times the derivative of inside. A is a constant, so we can keep that out front. And we'll have A, uh, we're gonna have cosine omega t plus phi times the derivative of the inside, right? Which is gonna be omega because this is a constant, so that would go away. So let's write that out. Okay, so derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside, which would be omega. So that gives me a omega cosine omega t plus phi sub i. Okay, so this would be velocity. This was position. And then for acceleration, we have x double dot. Remember the dot notation indicates you've taken a derivative with respect to time. So this would be the second derivative with respect to time, which would give us acceleration. All right, so we got that. And then for this one, let's take the derivative of this. Okay, so a and omega, those are constants. So let's just pull those out to the front. Derivative of cosine gives us negative sine. So we're gonna have negative out front sine omega t plus phi sub i, and then times the derivative of the inside, which is just omega. All right, so we get negative a omega squared sine omega t plus phi sub i. Okay, so we got all of this information just basically using this one little reference circle. All right, so this reference circle is what gives us this wave okay and the frequency and the period and everything just tells us more about the behavior of that curve all right so hopefully that kind of explained um, the difference between the f frequency the natural frequency and omega which is the angular frequency and then how periods related to that and how they're all related to phase um, and that reference circle now, I will say that a lot of the times in your equations, you might see this phi sub i term kind of goes away. We just don't worry about it too much. Um, so don't be surprised if you see that, if you'll just see a sine omega t. All right, so you might see that. Okay, so hopefully that made a little bit of sense, and I will see you guys next time.